So welcome back and hello if you are new. I hope all of you are doing really, really well. And thank you ever so much for tuning into this channel, particularly if it's your first time. So I will be reviewing Cult of Luna's brand new absolute monolith that is The Long Road North. I'll be detailing what I find good about the record, what I find not so good about the record, which is kind of hardly anything to be totally honest, what I found interesting about the record, and then summing up my points at the end of this video, then it's over to you, the viewer, to check the album out and let me know in the comments section underneath. Other than that, let's dive straight in to The Long Road North. So I don't know if you're familiar, but A Dawn to Fear was an album very much born of grief. The Long Road North is kind of, you know, that aftermath and kind of bringing yourself out of that. It was also very much inspired by the Swedish North and the actual landscape. And I think you could really, really hear that. You can feel it too. It's just one of those things that's kind of inherently in the record's DNA. One of the things I've likened this album to is almost like a post-metal equivalent of The Revenant. You know, despite there not being any bears, <laughs> there's the harsh, uncaring, unforgiving conditions that we associate with nature but then there's also moments here where this kind of element of solace comes in and everything sort of breaks just for a second and you're allowed to enjoy that sort of beautiful vista. And it really is like a, a journey through the wild with all these peaks and troughs and, you know, so much kind of happening, but in a particularly cinematic way. So it opens with this impervious kind of like impenetrable sound on Cold Burn. But then when we get to full moon into the long road north, it has that same note. And it's from that build up of the drums that you get to that final section where it's just like, again. And even when it sounds like the band maybe aren't really kind of doing all that much, there's always something happening. You know, we've got great examples of that in the Silver Arc, but also an offering to the wild. There's these kind of little xylophone moments here and there. And So I would say in terms of the bad, the only thing I can think of is that it might be a little bit daunting for some people. That's literally it. I guess people could maybe be put off a little bit by that. Personally, I absolutely love it. The more, the, the more Cult of Luna, the better. And now we kind of move to the more sort of interesting, quirky sort of side of this album. And there's a lot, believe me. So there's two interesting guest uh, collaborations on here that really kind of stood out for me. The first is Miriam Valentin, who is a um, singer in a band called Wild Birds and Peace Drums. She kind of brings this really nice, warm um, element to Beyond I or Beyond One. <laughs> Someone's calling out. And then the second is Colin Stetson. So he's kind of a, a bit of an avant-garde um, instrumental composer, but he's also worked on the Hereditary soundtrack. And he is um, kind of contributes Beyond Two, which is the final track, almost kind of like an epilogue, but also the introduction of An Offering to the Wild, which, you know, again, sets that sense of atmosphere. And And this record is so cohesive that I think for the first time in listening to a Cult of Luna record, there's not necessarily been a, a riff really that's like stood out because they're all so great and they all work together. It's almost kind of like all the, all the cogs turning at the same time to create this sense of atmosphere that we've got. But I guess if I had to pick one, it maybe would be Blood Upon Stone. I think there's a riff in there, which is absolutely awesome. Time, time, 
percussion is also an incredibly important element to this album, I think. And, you know, it's it's so much more than just extra bits of drums. It, it, it adds all of those kind of like sprinklings of flavouring and, and makes something that really elevates it, I think, to this next level. So take your time with this album. It's definitely their most cinematic release, I think, to date. Um, but also there's beauty in those details. There's so much going on that you can kind of gleam. And even now I'm listening to it. I've probably listened to this album like maybe 40 odd times or something. And I'm still kind of gleaming new things from it. This is an album band and this is an album record. And it is a definitive album of the year for me. So I hope you've learned a little bit more about Cult of Luna and their fantastic new album, The Long Road North. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. And other than that, I'll see you very, very soon. Take care. Yeah. <laughs>